Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living, going second, Boo Boo Stain, off of that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1400 ladder, ladies and gentlemen, I choke at Yu-Gi-Oh! like I'm choking on saliva, pause, because uh, apparently I just want to punt the football all the way into the next state or country whenever I play Tempai Dragon. So... What am I talking about? We got top eight at locals today, uh, specifically sixth place because going three and one with like 12 or 16 people, whatever it was after four rounds doesn't get you into top four, which it is what it is. I wanted to play test this version of Tempai. Um, uh, this build performed pretty well. Um, I want to talk about my matchups and also give a huge shout out to uh, the YGO process. Uh, my buddy Tino, we did a feature match at YouTube um, or feature match at YouTube. Yeah, we did it at YouTube, guys. Did a feature match at locals in the fourth round. I played against Snake Eye Fire, or just pure Snake Eye. I wasn't Fire King. But I just kept on wanting to punt the football and just not win the game like an idiot. Like, I, I whiffed game one, almost whiffed game two, and then, like, just easily won game three. It was... This is a big thing. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to come to this video once those matches are posted and be like, you really like misplayed hard. I know that I did. I played it dumb. Um, we'll, we'll talk about all that and more. But for anyone that wants to play a pure going second deck, I know I've talked about Tempai multiple times here on the channel, so I'm not going to bore you with all the effects and, and other builds I've been trying. I will say I think that my Cash Tira build is much better that I've been messing around with where, not to spoil it because it is a little bit of goo that no one else is on, but we are on three talents, a thrust and a monster reborn. Sounds weird. Trust me, it works. Um, whereas this build isn't on any of that. We're on shifters and hand traps and things like that. And I want to talk about that in this profile. Um, real quick to get into the matchups. Round one, I played against Voiceless Voice. Shout out to my buddy Sherrod. Uh, I got absolutely decimated. My butt cheeks got served up on a golden platter and I whiffed game two <laughs> because my dumb ass decided to Black Rose when he had a Skull Guardian and a set Cosmic Cyclone and he had the Ritual Spell Engrave. So he got out Saravis and I lost because he negated my special summon of Sangin Pai. <laughs> Ah, uh, you gotta love shotgunning a board nuke. I'm, I'm such a dumbass in this game sometimes, I swear. But you know what? That's why we play test at locals, so that we don't make these mistakes. Sugar Boo Bear. Round two, uh, I played against Flunder and won in like five minutes. Game one literally took a minute, maybe a minute and a half. He activated on Explored Wind, used its effect to put Eaglin on the bottom. He drew into another Eaglin and summoned it, and I Ash Blossom. He passed turn. Ha! <laughs> Game two, uh, he tr he goes Eaglin search M pen no extra normal, uh, goes duality before all that to get Feather Storm activates unexplored wind passes I draw he goes uh, Feather Storm I activate Heat Wave he pokes for eight hundred I proceed to OTK and we were done in like five minutes round three uh, we played against a Rika deck that was playing Ring of Destruction for some odd reason he summoned a Rika set three pass. I opened up Lightning Storm, proceeded to OTKM. Game two, he made me go first. We ended on Heavenly Spheres, and then we pretty much just were able to survive. He had three Rika monsters up that didn't do anything. I proceeded to OTK. And then round four, we played against Snake Eyes, went to three games. Probably should have been a swift 2-0, but we ended up getting the W anyway. Um, yeah, it it was it was a thing. Uh, go check out the uh, feature match on YGO Process's channel for it. It was... It was quite uh, quite interesting, and uh, we definitely don't play like that on the regular. So, starting off here, we're playing uh, three Chundora, if I can center this up. Uh, I don't need to explain any of these cards because we've explained them before, and I think all of you know how busted these cards are. Uh, three copies of this $20 card. Um, this card's insane. You you have to play it. And then two copies of Fadra. I see some people on one. I've even seen some on three. I think two is fine. I don't think you need anything more than that. Um, for the crap ton of hand traps we're playing, we're on three Ash Blossom. Uh, three Valor, uh, the one Magnumut, which is just crazy in this deck, being able to search your Fire Dragons. Uh, three Ghost Ogre. This came out several times today, but I really like it for um, the Mirror Match, and it's it's decent against Snake Eye. Um, it really depends on how they open, um, but this could be something moving forward, especially in the Nationals post-Infinite Forbidden that we may see more people play, just because of the fact that being able to pop the Sangin summoning is really good. That was why I was also messing around for a very short amount of time with Multi-Universe, because spoiler alert, we're playing Super Poly in this build. You can go Super Poly pitch the Multi-Universe, and you can go like Sangin summoning, use its effect to search if they try to Ghost Ogre you, then you can banish the Multi-Universe from your graveyard to protect it. It's like a Hugin. Um, so that was really interesting, but these, these got sided out a couple times today. Um, and then three copies of the 
auto win button of the deck. Um, we don't play these in the cash version, but you know, if you want just a straight going second version, shifter is obviously very good. The one time I opened this was against Flunder and he goes draw face shifter. I'm like, sure, that's fine. I got giddy because I knew I could OTK anyway. Um, for the spells, we're playing two lightning storm and one feather duster. I've seen people instead play set rotation. I tried it really wasn't a fan just because of the fact that the opponent's probably not going to activate the field spell that you give them, which means once they get rid of your Sangin Summoning, you're locked out of your field spell zone, and that can really hurt, especially because I win a lot of my games just off of Sangin Summoning alone. I've seen people play Necro Valley. I don't know why. Um, I guess if you're going first, then your end board being Heavenly Spheres plus a Necro Valley pass is pretty good, especially against Snake Eye, but it shuts you off from Fadra. Fadra can't summon anything back from Grave, so you're kind of crapping all over the venue floor at that point. Um, not a fan of it. Really not a fan of set rotation because of what I just said. Uh, Lightning Storm, I should have used in fucking game one against Snake Eye Fire, or uh, pure Snake Eye. Game I want to call it Snake Eye Fire King. Should have used that because then at most he gets two level ones, adds, you know, Popular and Ash get their effects to add. He had an Appalosa up. I could have gone Ash. And then even if he negates with Appalosa, I can just summon um, Bidora to run over it. Like it, it was a whole thing. But th these, these cards are absolutely incredible. Um, surprisingly, in this current meta, you would think that playing things like board breakers with like 15 plus hand traps isn't good, but it's actually really good. You know, you hand trap the opponent to oblivion and then you just hit them with a lightning storm or a feather duster, blow out the rest of their board and like you just proceed to decay. It's it's really disgusting. Three copies of Sangin Kaiman, aka Wanted Secret Simple Spoil 2.0. I love whenever people draw me and I have this in hand and I go, okay, cool, chain Sangin Kaiman to search. Um, the Snake Eye player, what was it, Game 3? Yeah, Game 3, I searched off Sangin Summoning, and he goes, uh, Droll. I go, okay, Summon Fadra, get back by Dora, set the Sangin Kaiman, and then I had Cosmic as well. So he tried to activate the Divine Temple, and we just cosmic it and proceeded to win from there. Um, 3 Sangin Summoning, I'm not even going to bullshit you. <laughs> you win most of your games off this field spell. This field spell is absolutely bonkers. Uh... I would even argue it's the first evolution of the gimmick puppet field spell because that field spell is just more broken than this. Um, it's it's crazy. Uh, one copy of terraforming because it's good. Three copies of prosperity because you can OTK through it. And then three copies of super poly. My thinking behind this was that you can super poly a U bell board. Um, you know, whether it's into starving venom or Dragos Capelli, whatever the case may be, or you just play loving defender. The Ubel player vomits all over the field, and you just go super poly and just clean up the whole board and make Loving Defender. This came up twice against uh, Voiceless Voice, both games. Other than that, it really didn't come up. Um, spoiler alert as well, I'm not playing Meteor Burst, so you could take out Moonlight or Ruddy Rose to play Meteor Burst, although I could have made Ruddy Rose game one against Snake Eyes, and that would have really helped. I probably could have won that game. Um, or you could take out, like, say, Earth Golematic Nister to play Meteor Burst in this build if you want to play this build. Um, and then last but not least, we're playing three infinite impermanence because the card's just absolutely cracked. Uh, let's jump into the, let's do the side deck first. Um, so I'm messing around with this ratio. Three Santa Claus with a Gamma Seal. You would think that four Kaijus is kind of weird. These cards are incredible. Um, they didn't come up today. I did side deck into Santa Claus at one point. Um, but having access to four kaijus to be able to simplify the board state, whether it's against Voiceless Voice to get rid of the Skull Guardian, um, because you're not getting rid of it by a card effect, so it doesn't trigger the ritual spell, just give them a kaiju. Um, a, any towers-like monsters, you can give them Gamma Seal or a Santa Claus. Um, especially Santa Claus is better because it's got weak attack. You just play it in attack mode and then, you know, transcend, can just run over it. Like, it, it's, it's a good time. You can run over it with any Tempies. I really like this engine. And moving into the Kashtira version that I'm going to play, uh, these cards have just been testing amazingly. So I, if you want to mess around with Kaijus, it's definitely good. I've seen some builds main deck Santa Claus instead. There's an argument to be made for it. I think it really just comes down to what you prefer as a player. Um, player preference is definitely a thing with this deck. Uh, one Druid Swarm, it never came up. Uh, I honestly just needed a 15th spot since I was main decking Feather Duster. No one's on this, and I imagine that people are going to be on it now that I've shown it. Uh, <laughs> Xyz Ray Pierce is disgusting. So it's a Fire Dragon, so you can instantly search it by Sangin Kaiman. And its effect is simple. It can summon other Xyz Ray Pierce. We don't care about that. It simply says that this card sent from the field to the graveyard and flip 5 and damage your opponent. So you go into time with this deck somehow. Either normal summon Xyz Ray Pierce or search it with Kaiman, summon it, whatever it is you need to do. Send this off, make Striker Dragon, you win in time. Because then this triggers since it was sent to Grave. This card's absolutely disgusting in time. If you're playing Ancient Fairy, I, I am in my other build, that's fine. But the problem is it could be hand trapped. This can't be hand trapped. You go first, you make Striker Dragon. Hey, you just took 500 damage, I win. GG, no re. 
Uh, abs absolutely insane card. Never came up, but it's insane. Three Heat Wave. This card needs to be banned. This card's insane. Literally, it's like another D Shifter. You have a 33% chance that they make you go first to auto win the ball game. They cannot summon any monsters. There's a reason why this card's $20. This needs another reprint, hopefully in a rarity collection too, or whatever it's gonna be called. Or the anniversary collection, whatever it's called. Three Cosmic, this card's insane. Uh, Hell's Break Boards. Um, there should be a third D barrier here. I don't know why there's only two. Maybe I accidentally put it to the side. Um, but this should be three. Uh, maybe I accidentally grabbed it. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there should be three D barrier here. But anyway, three D barrier. Um, it never came up. It's just another card to play going first, either against branded or what have you. It's um, it's it's D barrier. Yeah, I really don't know where that card went. Maybe we'll find it in the deck profile. I don't know. Maybe it's in my extra deck. I don't know. Anyway, it's three D barrier. Um, a two Sangam Pai, uh, two's fine. You don't need to play any more than this. This card is absolutely cracked. Uh, one Transcend. I've seen some people on more than one. You really don't need it. I, I had someone tell me today that they're afraid of Unicorn. So I'm playing a second copy, but I'm like, you can OTK without it. It's really not needed. One copy of our ultimate rare Trident Dragon. That looking back at the listing, I was told it's near mint. It's actually not near mint at the top here. It's a uh, very light play. It looks like someone sat on it, farted on it. It's uh, quite a shame. Looks like someone maybe chewed into it too, but beautiful ulti rare nonetheless we got it for 82 bucks so i can't complain one moonlight rose again you can make this into um meteor burst or even the cybers quantum whatever you prefer our beautiful 25th anniversary black rose dragon one rut row raggy ruddy rose dragon uh one garua one mud dragon one earth golem one starving venom one preta plant and then one striker dragon one little knight one erratic seal in case you're wondering why we're playing striker dragon it's because baguska literally takes a dump on this deck and it's not pretty so you can go make striker you go uh summon Bidora. Summon, uh, activate Chundor in hand, special summon, make the Striker Dragon, and then you go into Little Knight to banish the Baguska, and then there's your out. So, I don't know where my uh, third D barrier went, but it is what it is. This deck is really fun. Um, with that being said, I absolutely despise this build. Um, I'm sure some people are going to say, why aren't you playing Droplets? We're not playing Droplets because you're wasting most of your hand with hand traps. You're not going to have a lot of ways to negate cards. You're expecting the hand traps to eliminate the opponent's board without the use of Droplets. Um... I just need to get my hands on a triple tactic thrust and I can properly play my cash build. We're playing a three Fenrir, Rise Heart, and a Ray Soth. Spoiler alert. Um, but we went um, three and one today, only losing round one and then just like pretty much obliterating the rest of the competition after that. If I just, you know, didn't know if I could stop choking on my own saliva when it comes to playing against Snake Eyes. But that's another discussion for another day. Guys, let me know what you think about this build. What are some things that you would change? Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the build, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.